Do you have a story you'd like to share with the channel? Go to asthereavendreams.com and click the button to send it my way. You can also email it to me, but the website is the better of the two. And of course, thank you. Two buddies and I went up to Renton, Washington to pick up a mini truck that needed brakes, which we planned on fixing in an auto parts parking lot and driving it back down to Oregon the next day. The lanes in this town all seemed just too narrow, with nobody knowing when to stop or use blinkers. I'm talking people full on slamming their brakes as they pull up to red lights. Kind of odd, but it got weirder once we started working on the truck. The auto zone that we stopped at didn't have the brake pads that we needed, so we called up an O'Reilly's who said that they had them there. On the way, I saw a child stop at a crosswalk, look down the road which had no cars, wave at an imaginary vehicle and start walking. Minutes after this, I noticed someone riding a bicycle. I glance away for a split second and turn back to see the same person now walking, with a headlamp on and no bicycle in sight. Once we pull up to the O'Reilly's, there's a sign on the door saying, Family Emergency Closed Early. It had been no less than five minutes since we called them. Weird, but okay. We call up another O'Reilly's a few minutes away, and they say they have the pads in stock as well. We pull into the parking lot to see another handwritten note on the door that says, Personal Emergency Closed Early. At this point, the three of us find it pretty weird, but we just have to find some brake pads. Luckily, the next shop that we call has them, and they're still open when we get there. We get back to the trucks and slap the brakes on, only to notice the taillight is out. I stay with the truck because all of the tools are out while my two buddies go to a Walmart to find the bulb that we need. As I'm standing there, waiting, I watch a car pull into the large parking lot, circle several times over, and then leave. As the car pulls out, another pulls in and circles several times without stopping and leaves. This trend repeats itself about five more times until my buddies come back. Now, on to what happens to them on the Walmart trip. The GPS took them on a route that made them drive down a sidewalk through a Nissan dealership to get to the Walmart. When they walked in the Walmart, it looked as though it was still under construction. Bare walls everywhere, most of the product was on wrapped pallets, with employees just walking around aimlessly. Upon asking people for a key to get into the light bulbs, they found that only one person in the entire store had the keys, but not to the bulbs, to everything. The next day, we snap an axle on the way home a few miles outside of Seattle, about 10 miles from where we picked up the truck initially. While working on the car, a lady walks up, nice as can be, and asks what happened. We explain the situation and bring up our experience in Renton. She tells us that she's from there, and says she has no clue what we are talking about, and reassures us that we must have been in a neighboring town, because Renton is a quiet, lovely little place. We all felt that it just made it even more weird that before we could leave the area, someone came by started a conversation, and basically told us that we did not experience what we had. This happened about two years ago, and I still have no explanation. How did these parenting books end up in my car? Logical explanations welcome, but I doubt that we'll find any. Context. I was on my third date with my now boyfriend. We were meeting at the beach so that I could teach him to surf. He didn't have a car at the time, 
and I knew that I would be driving him home after we surfed. My car is usually a pigsty, so I diligently cleaned it before our date because it was too soon for him to see my true messy form. <laughs> my car was spotless, and the only thing in it was two surfboards, my wetsuit, and some surf wax. I parked a few blocks away, in a neighborhood area near the beach, and I unloaded my car and carried the boards to meet him at the beach. At this point, my car is completely empty, except for the surf wax. We surf for a few hours, and we both walk back to my car. Now, the glitch. I open my trunk to load the boards into my car, and I see three parenting books sitting in my trunk. I immediately screamed, these aren't mine, because I guess my first instinct was that it would be so weird to have baby books with me on a third date. I took a closer look, and I had literally never seen any of these books before in my life. The weirdest, glitchiest part is that I parked directly next to one of those free mini-book libraries, so it's almost like someone dropped off their books and they glitched into my car instead of staying in the library. Further proof of said glitch. My first thought was maybe I had left my car unlocked, and someone for some weird reason tossed their books into my car instead of the library. But I actually have proof that my car was locked. When I surf, I have to remove my mechanical, physical, key from my key fob, and tie the mechanical key into a pocket on my wetsuit. Then, I lock my car with a key fob while the door is open, toss the key fob into the car, and close the door. When I come back, I unlock my car with the mechanical key, and my car alarm always goes off until I can press the unlock button on my key fob. It's literally a horrible system, and every time I surf with someone new, they make comments about how bad my system is, and my boyfriend made a joke about the alarm going off, aka my door was definitely locked. Also, note that I don't have kids, and neither do any of my close friends, so no one that I drive regularly has any need for parenting books. I asked pretty much everyone I knew if they put the books in my car to mess with me, but everyone said no and that wouldn't make sense anyways. I cleaned my car right before my date, saw that my car was empty when I left it, and then saw the books when I got back. I should have kept the books to investigate them more, or in case there was some weird reason I was supposed to have them, but I threw them into the book library before I could think too hard about what had happened. So... Any logical explanations for this? So I'm not 100% certain where this would fit glitch-wise, but it still freaks me out a bit. Some background for this. My fiancé works a first job, and I work a third shift job. And this happened a couple of months ago, just to give a timeline. Our routine is normally I go to sleep when I get home, and when he gets to work, he wakes me up so that we can spend some time together before I have to go to work. Now, he tells me that he doesn't even remember this happening at all, even though I remember asking him a week after it happened, and he told me something different happened. Also, I love listening to you on YouTube while I'm at work. Keep up the awesome work. Thank you. But to the story. So, I was asleep when my fiancé came home and tried to wake me up. I distinctly remember him tickling or poking my side. I'm incredibly ticklish, and I was asleep and didn't originally know who was touching me because I was just woken up. Now, I also distinctly remember that, as I woke up, because it didn't instantly register in my brain that it was my fiancé, I had swung my arm out to hit the person that had just tickled me, 
barely missing him and smacking my hand off the doorway. I had swung hard enough that I managed to cut my hand slightly. Now, he didn't take offense and just shrugged it off. Not two hours later, after waking up and doing my routine, I had apologized to him for swinging at him. He said that it was fine and that he didn't care. Now, this is the crazy part. Two weeks later, I had brought it back up to him and he looked at me like I was nuts. He then proceeded to tell me that what had happened was that he had only poked my side, and I just rolled over, opened my eyes, and gave him an angry look. Now, I had the mark on my hand still from how hard I swung at him. I showed him the mark on my hand, and he responded saying that he didn't see anything on my hand. I then shrugged it off because the mark wasn't as bad or noticeable as it was when it happened. I then brought the story up a week ago, and my fiancé now claims that he has never woken me up that way before. I have no idea what is going on, but it's weirded me out, and it makes me feel uncomfortable. Any ideas? This happened about 10 years ago, when I was 17. I was in Tampa visiting my aunt and grandma. They lived two turns off of a very long, fairly main road, and I always remembered this weird-looking building about halfway down the road on the left. The architecture was super specific, and it was the only building for quite a ways on either side, about three quarters of a mile from the first turn to get to their house. It always stuck out to me as a kid as my marker that we were just around the corner. One night, I went to a concert about one and a half to two hours away. My aunt let me borrow her car, and I had to pick up another girl along the way. She lived about 20 minutes from my aunt's, and I had to get on the freeway to get to her house. I picked her up, we went to the concert, and then I drove her home. I can't remember the exact time of night, but it was late enough that there were very few cars left on the roads. I believe sometime between 12 or 2 a.m. This girl lived what I would describe as the swampy suburbs. There were lots of family homes, but the roads weren't paved super well. There were no street lamps, no sidewalks, and it was windy and confusing. It was not a clearly laid out grid, and I absolutely needed my GPS to guide me in and out. A couple of minutes after I dropped her off and started my 20 minute journey back to my family's house, I noticed my phone only had 2% left. I immediately started speeding to get out of the confusing windy roads of this neighborhood before I lost my GPS. My aunt called me to ask where I was, and as I said, I can't talk, I only have 2%, my phone died. I was in a practically pitch black neighborhood, with no sign of any main roads or any clear direction of how to get out. It felt like I was in a never ending maze. I went down road after road, flipping U-turns in random dark driveways, hitting dead ends every other turn. I was screaming and panicking, hitting the steering wheel with my hands. I was so, so scared. But after five to ten minutes of this, I had an insane sense of calm wash over me. In an instant, I knew it was all going to be okay, and that God, I was Christian at the time, no longer, would guide me home. I knew that there was no way that something bad was going to happen to me, and that felt like a fact. It was bizarre, like my body knew something that I didn't. The next turn that I took spit me out onto a new road. I turned right and immediately noticed the weird building by my aunt's house, literally on the corner. I turned around in the parking lot, went back down the road to their house, putting the building back on my left. 
I was home less than 10 minutes after I had dropped the girl off and got back through the suburbs. When earlier that night, it took me about 20 minutes on the freeway. But here's the kicker. The next day, I wanted to see what street I had come out of the night before, and I kid you not, there was no street there. Not even close. The next street that I would have been able to turn from would have been the first to get to my family's, about three quarters of a mile down. But when I turned onto the main drag the night before, the weird building was immediately on my right. This has always been such an insane memory of mine, and I know whoever I tell it to thinks that I must have just missed the streets somehow, but I went through every possibility and it just was not there. That, on top of it taking me significantly shorter amount of time to get home from that girl's house, especially after panicking and going down random dead ends, adding five to ten minutes, plus getting home in the amount of time through a neighborhood when before I had to take the freeway to get to her house, and the inexplicable knowing that I was going to be alright and that the literal next turn put me on the literal only landmark that I know in that area. I'm so glad that I found this sub, because this feels like the only place that would get this. I literally feel like I was transported. So, like a year ago, my mom, brother, and I were all packing to go to my cousin's house to stay for Thanksgiving. I packed my phone and a charger into my bag. When we got there, I took it out and charged it, then we had dinner and stayed for a while. I honestly don't remember if I put my phone back in my bag or not, but I know that my mom took the charger back with us. But anyways... It was time to go and we drove back to my mom's house. My parents are divorced, so I lived with her at the time. But when I got home, my phone wasn't in my bag. I looked everywhere in my bag and then I looked in my mom's car, everywhere that I possibly could. It was nowhere, so I assumed that I left it at their house. And I think I had forgotten to bring it back. I guess. But my cousins couldn't find it anywhere in their house either. So I just went without a phone for like four months until I got a new one. I started living with my dad again in May, and last month I was in the spare room with a bunch of boxes and movies, and I found my phone sitting on a chair in there. I asked my dad where it came from, and he said that he had found the phone around a month ago in that room, so he just left it there. I had a new phone by then, plus my old one was cracked and barely working, so that's why he didn't tell me. So, basically, I lost it at my cousin's, and it reappeared at my dad's house. I hadn't even gone to his house until six months after I had lost my phone. None of us had even gone to his house until way after the phone was lost, and my dad did not come with us to my cousin's house. So, my partner and I took a trip to Banff. One day, we went up to Sulphur Mountain. We got up by the gondola, and when we got there, I had immediately noticed a group, and one of them stood out because they were wearing off-white clothes. I'm into fashion, so it caught my attention. I liked their outfit. I pointed it out to my partner, and then we started our walk to the Cosmic Ray station from the gondola. It's a one-way there and back, so there's only one boardwalk to go both directions. Once we got up to the Cosmic Ray station, my partner and I took some photos, took in the views, and started our walk back. Just as we were coming down the steps from the Cosmic Ray Station, we noticed the group of people that we had seen at the beginning coming up. 
we walked past each other in opposite directions. They went up to the cosmic ray station and we went back down to start our walk back. We walked directly back this time and did not stop for photos. When we got back to the start, to where the gondola is, guess who we see? The group of people that we just saw at the cosmic ray station standing at the beginning of the boardwalk, taking pictures, and then getting back in line for the gondola. They even ended up on the gondola in front of us going down. It's not a long walk if you don't stop. Maybe 20 minutes, so... If they for some reason had ended up leaving the cosmic ray station as soon as they arrived, they would have passed and we would have 100% noticed. My partner and I just looked at each other, both so confused. We weren't able to understand how they could have gotten in front of us. Maybe the mountain air is messing with us, or something glitchy happened on the mountain that day. So, I'm looking for answers, because I have no idea what happened. For context purposes only, I work four tens, four days a week, ten hours a day. I have about a 30 minutes drive to my job in the mornings, so I leave around 4.30 a.m. to make it there at the punctual time, so that I can relax in my car before clocking in at 5.50. I was driving on Route 43, as I've done for the past year, and I went through the toll, as I have done for the past year of my life. After the toll, the very next exit is my exit. I take it to go to work, my parents' house, basically any time I need to get to Washington County, PA from the county that I reside in. So, it's safe to say that I have driven this route and taken this exit hundreds of times. Well, last Thursday, I go through the toll, but there was a very thick overcast of fog. I'm talking thick. But at this point, I know this route from memory, and even though I can't see the road signs, I know that my exit is the only exit for about four miles after the toll. So, I take the exit. But, instead of coming to the intersection of what I thought was the road that I needed to be on, it was this weird little podunk town. No cars in sight, and no cars on the road. I immediately turned around in a random driveway, and made my way back to where I turned from and got back on the Route 43 from the highway entrance. I kept driving, and the very next exit was the exit after my exit came up. I have no idea how or why I ended up in that town, and it has been bugging me incessantly. I know that I did not make a wrong turn, because, like I've said, I've been riding that route for a year straight. I knew it was an exit because of the line on the road. There's no exits before the one that I need to take so it's impossible to have turned too soon. And the next exit is about three to four miles up the road. I would have realized if it was different. I have OCD and I am on the spectrum, and I time everything, especially when driving. I know how long it takes me to get from home to the toll booth, toll booth to exit, exits to the next highway, and so on. So, with all of that being said, I don't know what happened. Has anyone ever had a similar experience? The OP then added an update. It's easier to update this instead of replying to every comment. To the people saying that I was half asleep and took the wrong exit, I go to sleep at 7pm and wake up at 3am. I am well rested and fully awake before I leave my house in the morning and taking the wrong exit would be a possibility if I hadn't already taken every single exit from my house to my job since then to see if that was the case. And as the post states, when I got back onto the highway, the exit that is directly after mine was the very next exit. Geographically, 
there is no way that I could have taken a different exit. I've looked into every logical possibility, trust me, and I still have no answers. My boyfriend and I went on a hike yesterday at St. Edwards Park in Austin, Texas. We were there for about three hours. We climbed to the top of the hill, and then walked back down to the very bottom of the valley, went back up to the main path, and then back down to the parking lot. We got lost a couple of times exploring the different paths, but eventually found our way back to the main path pretty steep trail at a lot of points. We went into the bird sanctuary, where we saw no life. No bugs, no birds, nothing. We even sat in the dirt for a good half hour. I was worried about ants at first, but we literally saw and heard no life. On our way down, after we found our way back to the main path, we saw a couple of people walking alone. One ahead of us, going back to the parking lot, one was going up the hill away from the parking lot. It was already almost sundown at this point. It was about 6.30pm. The one guy going up the hill, we said hi to. So, I remember what he looks like. He was an Asian guy, maybe in his early to mid-twenties, wearing a grey t-shirt, thick rimmed glasses, a black backpack, and gym shorts. Nothing to it. He's maybe ten minutes from the parking lot. Remember that he's going uphill and we're going down. We briefly stopped at the creek and sat for maybe three minutes, and we noticed that once again there is no life. No fish swimming, no frogs, nothing. We felt eerie about this, but summed it up to, the city is destroying nature. We got to maybe 30 seconds from the parking lot, when we saw the same guy coming from the parking lot. I stopped, turned around, and said, Wait, no, what? Did we go the wrong way? The tree line covers the parking lot even when you're basically standing at it. I'd been to this park multiple times, and I knew the parking lot was right there. My boyfriend said, No, we're here. We got into the car and looked at each other dumbfounded, and said, That was the guy, right? There is no possible way that he could have made it back to the parking lot before us, especially without us seeing him. Even if he was running, we're both fast walkers, he would have had to have gone by us, and the guy hadn't broken a sweat. It was about 86 Fahrenheit, that's 30 Celsius, on top of being humid, as Austin always is. On our way home, a song came on and I said, oh god, okay, and changed the song. The next song to come on was called, Okay. At this point, I'm broken, almost scared. I was freaking out about all of this for hours afterwards. I'm questioning everything. Nothing is real. What the actual hell is going on? This happened about 15 years ago, at the... I'm sorry, I'm going to butcher this word, Staatsbibliothek, meaning State Library, at Potsdamer Platz in Berlin. In the entrance area are rows of coin lockers for the guests, mostly students to use. You're not allowed to bring bags or jackets into the library, so everything goes into the lockers. So I pick a locker at the end of a row, and I lock up my stuff. You have to put a coin in as a deposit. I guess because of safety reasons, the keys don't have a number on them, in case they get lost or stolen, so you have to remember your locker number. I was a student at the... Again, I apologize. 
a free universitat back then and wrote most of my papers at said library. Anyway, so I get back after a long day, still thinking about my work. I open my locker and there's different stuff in it, like girls' clothes, etc. I was dumbfounded, like what the hell? Before I even thought much about it, I put the coin back in, locked it, and then opened it again. Obviously, the same unexpected content. Then I checked the number of the locker, and it dawned on me. My locker was probably down one more row. So, I locked the locker again, checked the last locker in the next row, and lo and behold, my stuff. So, I was like... Wait a minute, why does my key open another locker? That's disturbing. I go back to the first locker, and my key would not work anymore. I tried several times. I wriggled and nudged, but it would not open. Then, by chance, or rather because of the library closing soon, the girl that used this locker showed up. Long story short, I explained the situation, but she didn't really believe me, until I described the contents of her locker. So I asked to see her key. It was shaped completely different. After she left, I even put a coin in, locked it, and tried to unlock it with my key, to no avail. Anyway, it was really disturbing. It felt like I could easily unlock it even multiple times, while I believed it was my locker, and then after the realization of the mistake, the magic was gone. Or was it really a glitch in the Matrix? Firstly, I am not a skillful writer, but I will try to relate this the best that I can. I will start by saying that I have childhood memories going back to when my younger sister was born. My sister and I are born 21 months and a bit of change apart. I can remember her coming home from the hospital, making my early memories starting from before the age of two. Anyways, I have a memory of a memory of being a baby, except through the eyes of an older man. I remember the frustration of realizing that I was unable to control the movement of my arms. My arms had no strength and would not go the way that I wanted them to go. I knew what I wanted them to do, but it had a disconnect, like using a rigged claw machine in an arcade. I recall my frustration at being a baby with an adult reasoning as a child. I'm not sure how old, about six or seven years? Maybe if I had recalled this as an adult, I could have taken more information out of it, or asked myself more questions or dwelled a little longer. The frustration was real. I was an adult male, neither a bad nor good man. Probably between 20 to 30 years old, probably closer to 20. I have no concept of race or nationality of that person. I, however, suspect that I was from an English-speaking nation. I do not know how that person's reasoning ended up in the body that eventually became mine. All I know is that eventually that spark, or reasoning, stopped. Maybe out of sheer frustration, boredom, or the horror of being trapped in a tiny helpless body. I don't even know if that person became me later on or my body developed its own personality. I would like to think that, because of my birth year, 1970, the Vietnam War was still in full swing, and maybe I lost my life there and somehow ended up back as a baby 4,963 kilometers away. If anyone lost someone, I'm still here, and waiting to meet you again. I have other odd happenings that I can write, if anyone is interested. I'm interested.
Both my friend and I moved away from our home country in August, and both of us moved to different countries for uni. I'm in Amsterdam, and she's in Prague. Since then, we both seem to be having the same random, really odd, specific things happening to us on the same day. Not anything scary, just oddly specific. Here are a few. Just today, I went to use my washing machine as usual, but I didn't have a lot of time. So, I decided to quickly Google the washing machine manual online, because I didn't know how long each program takes. Quite literally a few minutes later, my friend sends me a message. Do you know where I can find out how long each program on this washing machine takes? Because it doesn't show the time on mine. Just very oddly specific. Another one is that I bought a coffee a few days ago, and when the cashier gave me my change, I noticed that one of the 50 cent coins looked strange, and then realized it's a new Croatian 50 cent coin. Again, a few minutes later, my friend sends me a picture of a Croatian 50 cent coin saying, Haha, look what I just found in my pants pocket. Last week we were calling each other, and she told me that she was in the tram and got up to let an old lady sit down, because it was full, and then suddenly the tram pulled off and she fell over. The same thing had happened to me that morning. I fell over in the tram after letting an old lady sit down. I could go on and on, but this has been happening for weeks, and it's four to five times a week, and it's always really super specific. It's getting kind of creepy. So that, my friends, was a fantastic and eerie collection of Glitch in the Matrix stories. A collection of stories that I do once a week, every Monday, sometimes Tuesday, if the weekend goes weird. Which has happened. Not typically, but it does. Anyways, this is a collection of some weird, odd, strange, and bizarre things, and each one of these was weird, that is for sure. Yeah, things moving. Not really just lost item phenomena, or like disappearing object phenomena, I suppose is what it's called, but also some random reappearing object phenomena. One that almost felt like a past life story. Um, people respawning. And then Renton, Washington is apparently a strange place. I loved all of these stories, and thank you to each and every single one of you who let me use your stories or submitted your stories. You all make this video, made this video possible, because... If I had to tell you guys my glitch experiences, this video would be an intro and then an outro. Fun times. Y'all would like that, right? A two minute long Glitch in the Matrix video? With me saying submit your stories, the intro video, and then just the outro, I guess? That'd be a weird time. Anyways, hopefully you all enjoyed this video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button. It does help tremendously. If you're new to the channel and liked what you heard, could you please also subscribe? That would also help tremendously. We are incredibly close to 24,000. 25,000 is what I'm assuming the year will end at. We will not hit my goal, sadly, but that is okay. This year was a weird year. The summer months really messed things up. We will get as close as possible and reset the goal for next year. We're doing amazing things regardless, and I still love doing this, so ain't stopping. Yeah. Uh, you can also join Patreon or membership where you get early access to content like this. Uh, members will be seeing more early access videos because YouTube has fixed their stupid system. That's right. I am blaming YouTube for a lot of my videos not going up early as members because the old system, I used to have to upload the video, set it to members only, and then whenever it was no long, whenever it was 5.30 p.m. time for it to go public, I would have to manually set it to public. Now that system doesn't always work. If I upload the video at, say, 2 o'clock, there's really not any way for me, for the system, sorry, to process the video and have it ready to go by the time it's supposed to go public. I know that sounds slow, but the system is very confusing. So, now they fixed it. I can set a video to members only and set it automatically to be scheduled to public at 
there you go. Problem solved. So members will be seeing more early access videos. Just saying. Patreon has never really had an issue because it's a totally different platform. So, Plus the content they get is in MP3 format. So not MP4 like the video. So it's just audio, but it's the same content really. Yeah. Um, yeah. The other thing you can do is participate in what we call the word of the week. My friend, you were at a juncture. You can make a decision to participate in the word of the week or not. You cannot participate in last week's word of the week where the word was juncture. Check the screen where, uh, for, the, for all the comments. Uh, because I cut it off typically around Sunday the following week. Because I like to get them screenshotted and put in the video. And if you post a, a comment five minutes before the video goes live, I can't add it. Just not a possibility. Anyways, thank you to each and every single one of you on the screen who commented and those who didn't. That is okay. I still say thank you. This week... We're going to have a little fun. I'm going to make this a super easy word of the week. Yeah, that was that was a really dramatic sounding way for me to say it. Um, it's a super easy word of the week. All you have to do, the only thing you have to do, is somewhere in your comment, leave a jack-o'-lantern emoji. Or a pumpkin emoji if you can't find the jack-o'-lantern one. Just leave a jack-o'-lantern, leave a pumpkin... Doing this because tomorrow is Halloween, and it's funny. It, it's funnier this way. Anyways, leave a jack-o'-lantern or a pumpkin emoji in your comment, and it will be featured next week. Next week, we will get back to the word of the week, I promise. So, All that said, friends, I hope you have a beautiful day, and I hope I do see you again here very soon. But until then, remember, you are loved, you are valid, you are important, you are the best you that you can be. Do not forget it, and don't let anyone tell you otherwise, dang it. And of course, until next time, much love and sleep well.